What's up folks, Will Hamilton here. Got my uh, Wimbledon whites on, uh, about to go hit a tennis ball, but I thought uh, everybody on the ESPN set is dressed in all white, so I might as well, uh, might as well emulate that. This is actually old school uh, Fuzzy Yellow Balls t-shirt. This is like, man, this shirt must be like eight years old or something like that. Uh, it's, it's, it's from back in the day, the origins of, uh, of FYB, but uh, I want to welcome everybody that's watching, uh, watching live. There's a chat box where you can, uh, where you can interact. But we're going to keep today relatively quickly. You know, I sent out a poll uh, a couple days ago, and we've been talking about running plays and how, when you're trying to affect villains' court positioning, you can stretch them wide, you can push them back, you can pull them in, or you can hit behind them. And I sent out this poll, and I said, well, which, uh, which one of these are you the best at? And most people, overwhelmingly said that they are best at stretching their opponents wide. So getting them off the court. And maybe I was a little bit surprised about that because uh, I figured a lot of folks would be really good at pushing back. But, um, but it, was, it was overwhelming that stretching wide was, um, was, uh, was the number one uh, skill set uh, y'all had when it came to affecting villain's core position. So that got me thinking, you know, it, it, when I saw that, I was like, well, this is part of the reason people struggle against pushers so much. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about what the pusher does, and then we're going we're gonna, to, I guess you could say, assign a little bit of homework. Uh, but I want everybody to leave comments, whether you're watching this live or after the fact, leave some comments. We're going to have a follow-up video where we're going uh, to sort of do a follow-up video based on, based on everybody's feedback. But the pusher, let's say villain is the pusher up here, and here you are down here, your hero. So the pusher runs a play called Trench Warfare. And Trench Warfare is pretty straightforward where imagine you have a trench up here and you got a trench down there. And so what villain, what the pusher likes to do is set up shop in their trench and then they like to hit high loopy balls, you know, moon balls, and push you back into your trench. And from this location, it is really hard to move into no man's land and get up to net and end the court, but it is also extremely difficult from back here to stretch your opponent. When you're back here, balls are going to go through the court, and it's really hard to get it off the court. You basically can't. You basically have to hit through the court um, from this far back behind the baseline. So for most folks, it eliminates their number one skill set as far as affecting villain's court position. So it was just interesting for me to see that and then be like, okay, well, this is, you know, one of the reasons people have such a tough time against, against the pusher. They get stuck in trench warfare and then they don't know what to do from here and they can't get them off the court. You can really only hit through. It's tough from this far back to pull your opponent in, particularly if villain is hitting like high loopy balls. It's hard when you get a high ball to get it short and low over here. It's hard to return that and get it to like stay low um, and do anything with that. So you can see why trench warfare is so effective. So my question for everybody watching, again, whether live or, or you know, most folks are going to be watching this after the fact. So leave comments below. What would you do to prevent the pusher from getting you into trench warfare? How would you construct a point? What would you do when you're serving? What would you do when you're returning? And what would you do when you're in a rally? And let's say it's not quite entrenched warfare yet. Let's also say if you get into trench warfare, how would you try and get out of this? So when you're answering this question, do it through the lens of these four ways you can stress a villain's core position. So we've been talking about this document that we have. It's not on this video um, right now, but uh, it's somewhere in the Facebook group. If you're not in the Facebook group, join the Facebook group. If you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a link below. But when you look at this document, you've got the four ways you can stress villain. So how would you try and stress the pusher using these uh, four ingredients? And how would you try and prevent the pusher from getting, uh, from letting the pusher get to his or her favorite uh, uh, rally play, which uh, is trench warfare? So I want to I want to see, um, i looking forward to seeing everybody's comments, and then based on everybody's feedback, we'll do another video where we talk about some of the solutions you all have and um, some of the things I would recommend in terms of, uh, in terms of the fixes. Um, 
And uh, so like uh, Matt Jazz, it's a, so Matt Jazz is talking about using the drop shot when he's not very good at, uh, at net. So like that's, that's uh, so that in Matt Jazz's, um, if, we, if we apply it to our terminology here, a drop shot would be a pull, right? So you're pulling villain in, but then Matt Jazz is, it sounds like, and Matt Jazz, correct me if I'm wrong, you're moving forward as well. So it's a drop shot and then you're coming in. It's kind of a Federer play where he'll hit the drop shot and then he'll move in. But Matt Jazz isn't super comfortable with his net play. So that's, uh, that's one of the questions he's answering. Uh, take the ball out of the air early is, a, is another suggestion. That was Anthony that just came through. So if you take it out of the air early, let's say pushers back here in the trench, you're trying to come forward. So the question would be, what would be the next shot you would hit? You take it out of the air early, it's still probably going to be a push. And keep in mind, we've talked about, if you watch the other videos, we talked about operating in contrast. It's very hard to push someone back if they're already back here in their trench because you've already pushed them back or they've just gone back here on their own. So a push isn't nearly as effective, right? So operating in contrast would be a pull. But again, we talked about how that's harder. Or it could be a stretch, right? Because that's not a push. But how do you get them off the court when you're that far back, right? Now, if you pull them in and then you try and push back, that's super effective because the push works now because they're not ready for a ball that's either at their feet or has some pace on it. So you can see how knowing where villain is positioning themselves, where they're physically standing, dictates so much of what the right shot should be. So Anthony, to come back to your question, if you take that ball out of the air, are you still trying to hit a push? It could work, but he's already, you know, pusher's already set up for it. So those are the things we need to start, start considering. What would you do? You take it out of the air, but then what would you do with that volley? Where would you go after that? And what would you be anticipating? So that's sort of the questions I'm trying to pose right now and, and get a little dialogue going. So um, just post those comments below. Looking forward to reading them all, following up, and, uh, and just discussing how to construct plays, right? Construct plays through the lens of the four ways we can stress villain. And, the, uh, and, and when we say stress, we're talking about the court positioning, right? You know, everybody focuses on hitting these big shots. Like, oh, I have a great forehand. I hit it really hard. Well, that's cool and all, but obviously hitting the ball hard isn't necessarily the end-all, be-all. Particularly, you know, you might have a good forehand, but you're hitting it hard and the pusher's way back here and they're set up for a push. You know, when you hit with pace, you're trying to push, right? Well, they're already set up for that. So how do you use your shots to affect villain's court positioning and improve your court position? So that's, um, well, we got, oh, there's Elizabeth. So she, sa she says a uh, forehand drive. Um, and Tim's saying uh, stretch, then sharp pull to the other court uh, and be ready for the, um, so it'd be pull off the court, it looks like, or stretch, pull off the court, stretch off the court, and then the next ball would be over here. So the context I'm looking for here is if you are already in trench warfare, how would you do that? If you're already way back here, how do you stretch when you can, when from back here the angles you can generate are through the court and not really off the court? So if you look at it through a serving lens, well, then you might be able to stretch. If you look at it from a returning lens, you might be able to stretch depending on how good the serve is. You could push, you might be able to pull. But it's all these ingredients we want to start thinking about. So I'm purposely not answering the question right now because I, I think this kind of dialogue and thought process is really powerful. But talk about it not just, you know, when you're answering in the comments, not just from a rally stage, right? So if you're in trench warfare, okay, cool, what do you do from here? But how about when you're serving? How would you set it up so that villain doesn't even get to trench warfare? And if you're returning, how do you set up your return so that villain doesn't get to trench warfare? Because a pusher, as soon as he serves, is gonna try and retreat back to the trench, which is important information to know from a positioning standpoint because then that facilitates certain, certain opportunities versus another player who might kind of hold their ground. So like an aggressive baseliner, for example. So that is, uh, uh, that is what I wanted to talk about today. I actually need to scoot because I'm going to play tennis right now. I'm going to, not against the pusher playing doubles, but, uh, uh, you know, pushers can play doubles do that too. They like to lob a lot. But uh, in any event, thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in live. Thanks, uh, thanks for all the comments. Look forward to reading them and then doing a follow-up video where we kind of uh, discuss some of the options and plays that are recommended for counteracting a pusher in this instance. Um, 
and yeah, we'll go from there. Looking forward to it. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great Saturday. Enjoy Wimbledon and enjoy, well, we're, you know, Wimbledon's still going on. So might do a watch party more for the final, more on that a little bit later on. But anyway, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Talk to you guys soon.